Lesson 12, Slim 4 Authentication, setting up the front end with Lou. All right, so this lesson's gonna be pretty quick compared to the last one. First, we're gonna have to touch package.json. This will create our package.json file. After that, we are going to create this JSON object and we are going to set our JSON um, or node modules or NPM set up to be private. And then we are going to add our scripts. And then we're going to add our dev dependencies. And then we're going to add our non-dev or our production dependencies. So for those who are not familiar, you can think of the package.json the same way as you think of composer.json just for JavaScript, our front end packages. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm gonna copy these scripts in um, and these are going to be in the GitHub repository, but these are just simple helper scripts that, you know, let me scroll back over. Let us run some cool stuff. So if we wanted to do like uh, example and then we wanted to do, you know, whatever, uh, echo example, just like that, or maybe it's like console.log example. They're just custom scripts that we can add. Um, and so we just have run dev, run development, run dev is an alias of run development, watch, which will just consistently watch our JavaScript and recompile when we make changes, hot, which will actually reload our browser automatically when we make changes, prod, which will compile our changes, but also compile um, or compress and zip them or do whatever we need to do for production. Okay, so then after that, we're going to add the dev dependencies. And again, all of this is available in the GitHub repo. So I'm just covering it right here right now, um, but all is available in the repo. And then finally, after that, we're gonna add our production dependencies. Once we have that set up, we need to run npm install. Now what npm install is going to do is it's going to create this new node modules directory right here. Um, and it's not done yet, but when it is done, it's gonna be just like vendor. Whenever we do composer install, we create our vendor repository. But we don't want to add that to our GitHub repo. It takes too long to git commit, git push, and do all that stuff. So we're gonna add our node modules to our git ignore. And this is going to just say, hey, whenever we push to GitHub, whenever we do anything, then don't add it. Okay, so now that we have our node modules installed, um, and by the way, I'm not sure why, but my PHP storm um, is not showing the node modules, but if you go to the terminal, um, I do have my node modules directory. For some reason, PHP Storm's just not picking up on it, which is completely cool as long as we know that we have it. So I'm gonna clear that out. And now that we have that set up, let's go back to our package.json and let's take a look at this Laravel mix. So Laravel mix is a really cool, one of my favorite NPM packages, um, surprise, surprise. And it allows us to make this webpack.mix.js file. And then within this webpack.mix.js, which is just stored in the root of our repository, it allows us to import mix by simply requiring Laravel mix. And then we can also import the path by requiring the path. Next, I'm gonna create this comment explaining what it does. So mix asset manager. And then we're just going to say Laravel mix is a wrapper around Webpack for easy, um, easy hook in, into, and then we'll say the uh, Webpack build steps slash lifecycle. So what is Webpack? For those who are not familiar, Webpack basically says, okay, our JavaScript files are stored here. Here's our entry point. We're gonna have an output point. We're gonna compile every possible format we could write JavaScript in, and we're gonna compile it into a, an, um, I guess, agnostic, something 
that every single browser can read. So we can write in ES6 or ES7 or whatever we're at right now. Um, and then it will compile it into the most vanilla JavaScript so that all browsers can actually read the uh, JavaScript code we write. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to say, okay, mix.js, let's grab our JavaScript file from our resources directory. Then within resources, we're going to create a new JS directory. And then within JS, we're going to create a new file called main.js. And we're going to take that file and we're actually going to compile it and output it to the public JS directory, which will automatically create behind the scenes. So here's what we're going to do is I'm, I have that set up now. And so now we're going to actually go in here and we're going to say import view from view. And then we're going to do window.app equals new view. And then that's going to create a new view component. It's going to be our root view component. And we're going to mount our root view component to the element with an ID of app. So now what we need to do is we're going to go back to our views. We're going to go to our layouts. We're going to go to our app. And this parent div, this root div we have, we're going to give it an ID of app. And so we're going to say, okay, whenever we create a new view virtual DOM, a view DOM tree, and we'll get into that a little bit later, um, we're just going to mount our view tree or view components, the root component to this ID. And so all of our view components, all of our view, our JavaScript, our reactive functionality will take place within this div, which works perfectly because that means we can use view just about anywhere in our application. Okay, so then after that, I'm going to create this new directory. I'm going to call it components. And within components, I'm going to create another directory. And I'm going to call it auth. Within auth, I'm going to create this new file and I'm going to call it register.view. And all register.view is going to do is it's just going to be div h1. And we're going to say register whoop, register form, just like that. Then we're going to do script export default. And then we're going to name this register. And then we're going to say methods. And then the method is going to be um, example and then whenever they click on this we're just going to console.log hello world and all we're going to do is add this h1 below that we're going to add a button that says hello world and then whenever we click that button at click event we're going to say at click example and so that will automatically trigger the Vue.js method then within our uh, main.js we're going to import our register component and then we're going to import that from um, dot slash components slash auth and then slash register dot view then we're going to globally register this to view so we can use this component anywhere and we're going to say register and then that's going to be our register component just like that. Next, we are going to go to our auth and we're going to create a new blade file. We're going to call this register.blade.php. Within this, we are going to extend from layouts and then we're going to create a content section. We're going to end that content section and then we're simply going to say register just like that. And so now our register template will appear right there. Finally, we actually need to compile this. So to do that, we're going to do npm run dev. Once we run our dev and that finishes compiling, we should be able to go and I actually need to add the route. So now we need to go to route slash web dot php and then we need to go route git slash register and then we're going to do function use view and then we are going to just say view view and then we're going to say view the template is going to be auth dot register and then we're not going to pass any data okay and so now if we go to our register endpoint whoop layouts not found 
Okay, so layout's not found. That means extend layouts. Ah, so we want to extend layouts dot app. So layouts dot app. So we want to extend app. And then when we reload this page, it's still not going to work. Okay, so that part works all right, but we don't have our view set up. And you can get this view um, extension in Chrome or Firefox. Just go to the browser extension store. And it is free. Um, but the reason it's not going to work is because we're not actually using our um, our main.js script. So we need to add our script right there at the bottom of app.blade. We know it's JS main because we are compiling the main.js to the public JS directory. So if we go to slash backslash, that's automatically going to go to public, then it's going to go JS slash main. So then if we reload our page, there we go, register form. And of course, if we X out of that, reload that one more time, and then we pull up our Chrome console inspector, we will have our view decompile. And here's our register component. If we go to console and we click on this, hello world. And so guys, that is how you set up Vue inside of Slim 4. And so again, all we did was we installed our package.js dev dependencies and dependencies. We have all these scripts, dev, watch, production, hot. Um, we then set up our webpack.mix.js. But then webpack.mix.js, we're saying, okay, we want to compile the resources JS main file, which is here, resources JS main.js to our public JS directory. It will automatically create and compile behind the scenes. It will create the JS and compile to main.js. Here's the compiled file. It looks ugly, but that's that's what Webpack does. It turns our pretty code into browser agnostic code, something that all browsers can read. So after it does that, it will just import everything we need. So it imports view and imports our register component. And then we just say, okay, globally add the register view component by using our register dot view file. Once we do that, we simply say, we're gonna set our window app to a new view instance. And we're going to mount view, view to the element with an ID of app. Well, Within our app.blade, we added this ID app on the root div. And so now, Vu, the virtual DOM that Vu provides, has been mounted here. Finally, we simply import our compiled JS at the bottom, which is going to point to, it's really pointing to public slash JS, but because we're on the front end, it's relative. So we just need to add slash JS slash main dot JS. And then we just yield the content. And so within register.blade, we extend layout and then we add content that it will yield. We use our register dot view component and la la, we have view on the front end. So that was a lot in a short lesson guys, but in the next lesson we will continue and we will actually be focusing on CSS, SCSS, and really setting up our register form and then going from there and setting up all of the other authentication stuff. Um, we do have other Vue tutorials that are more in depth than this one. Um, Vue is not the main focus of this tutorial, so I did fly through that, uh, but we will be using it a little bit. Feel free to check out some of those other tutorials. Um, otherwise, like I said, we'll just fly through the Vue parts, try to use it as simply as possible and only use it where we need it. Um, thanks again, guys. This is Zachary Horn with Clean Code Studio, Clean Code, Clean Life. Um, next time we will be getting into probably setting up Tailwind as CSS. Simpler.